Hello everyone, this is Musa Sharkawi, I'm a cardiology fellow at uh, Hartford Hospital, University of Connecticut. This is day two of ACC 2018 meeting in Orlando, Florida. And I'm joined here by uh, Dr. Pinak Shah, he's a program director of uh, uh, Interventional Cardiology Fellowship at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Thank you very much for joining us. Dr. Thank you very much for uh, having me and looking forward to have you come join me. Yeah, we, we definitely look forward to it in the future. Now, what's your advice for, inter for general cardiology folks or, you know, early career interventional cardiologists and fellows in training about attending general cardiology meetings such as the ACC and AHA and what, what do you think they, they would benefit from attending such meetings? Yeah, so I think uh, these meetings are incredibly important uh, from an educational standpoint, obviously. I mean, I think it's a great opportunity to see people from all over the country and all over the world discuss common problems, uh, common clinical issues that, uh, that you may see one way of how it's being dealt with, but you get a broader perspective on how it's being dealt with around the world. Um, so I think it's really a tremendous opportunity to broaden your horizons on things that you're thinking about every day when you take care of patients. I think more importantly for, um, for general cardiology fellows and particularly uh, people who may be in interested in intervention, it's a perfect opportunity at this stage of your career to um, begin to network a little bit. Um, uh, right now in your stage of training, you're really, your, your mentors that, that are training you now are really the only cardiologists that you probably really know and you may occasionally get to meet people when they come to visit your institutions but this is a great place to to meet other people and um, you know people who may be able to help advance your career because of a common research interest maybe to build collaboration to talk about future training etc so um, so I do think that the meetings provide a very important role for people at the, uh, the fellowship training at the fellowship level as well as uh, junior faculty mm -hmm. What are things looking like for the field uh, of interventional cardiology? And if you can comment after that about uh, some advice and tips for folks who are thinking about applying for interventional cardiology and, and really reflect back about their applications and their skills, et cetera. Sure. So, you know, I will say that um, you mentioned about people being on the fence. I think it's going to be very important to get off of the fence <laughs> and figure out that this is really what you want to do. Because I, it's, um, it is an incredibly exciting field right now, and I'll talk about some of those reasons uh, in a second. But as a result, there's a lot of people who want to do it. There's a lot of competition for fellowship spots. There's a lot of competition for jobs afterwards. And I do think that you have to be fully committed to immersing yourself in this if you uh, really want to be able to have a significant impact in, in, in the field. It's not something that you're going to do on the side. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that you really have to, to be all in with. So you really have to make that decision first. Um, now, in terms of you know where I see the field going uh, for people like yourself who are going to be training in this field and looking in the future, uh, again, it, it has been an unbelievable journey. I think just in the last, even last five to ten years, you know, when I came out of fellowship training 15 years ago, you know, we were still putting bare metal stents in everybody, and um, and this is before we really understood what we were doing. We weren't using FFR. We weren't. Uh, you know, 30% of our cases were instant restenosis, and in a very short period of time, all of that just went away, you know, which is good and bad. It's bad because our procedural volume went down, but it's good because we were actually doing more appropriate cases, and we're taking care of, take care of patients with better devices and getting better outcomes down the line. Um, but that's pretty much what we were doing. The peripheral side of things really started to pick up around that time and, and gained a lot of uh, uh, interest amongst uh, trainees coming out. And then certainly the, the, the structural boom has been absolutely incredible. And I think that um, uh, I, I believe we're on the tip of the iceberg when it comes to TABR and, you know, who will be eligible for TABR uh, down the line. Uh, and we're also now just beginning to really get into the mitral space, still a wide open area. But uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we are going to be able to figure that out and think about um, consistent, safe, uh, durable devices for transcatheter mitral valve therapy as well and that's also going to open up the doors um, um, uh, in my opinion within five to ten years mm -hmm. so I think the future is incredibly bright there's gonna be a lot for us to do I don't think that one person's gonna be able to do it all mm -hmm. and I really see just like cardiology decades ago broke into a heart failure 
non-invasive, EP, intervention. I see intervention breaking into you know, coronary, structural, and peripheral. It's already there, but I think we're at that stage where there just isn't enough volume of everything where we can solely train people in each of those tracks. Right now, as you know, at our program, our fellows come in, they stay for two years, they get, all, they get everything in two years. But can they legitimately practice everything when they get out at, to a high level? I think that's very hard. So I do think that, uh, at least right now, at this stage of the game, uh, decide on interventional cardiology, find that fellowship, and during that time, think about what it is that you really want to do. It's okay to say that I want to be a coronary interventionalist, I don't want to do structural. Mm -hmm. That's okay, don't feel so, you know, because it's a hot thing doesn't mean you have to do it. There's so much more to be done in coronaries. There, we're, we're learning um, so much about CTO techniques right now. It's, 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 a, it's a field all of its own. There's also um, this whole area of cardiogenic shock and, and taking care of the absolute sickest patients and getting uh, good outcomes. I don't think that's something that every interventionalist can do. And I don't think it's something that every interventionalist should be doing. I think that you know there, there are still opportunities to, to build and grow the coronary space. And same with the peripheral space, too. Mm -hmm. I think we as interventional cardiologists have taken our eyes off the ball a little bit on the peripheral uh, land, uh, landscape. And I think that's because um, we've seen structural grow so quickly. And you know we got distracted by that. And on top of that, we not depending on your center, Many centers have another group of physicians who do that kind of work, like vascular surgeons. So the, it's not like the volume was just sitting around waiting to be done by us. It yeah. just got taken over by other people in some places. So I still think there's a huge role for cardiologists to play in that space, only because um, in addition to the technical skills that are required for it, we also understand, uh, it, it, we understand the biology, the medical treatments, and everything else that goes to taking care of these patients. And I think we're very well, if not better suited than any other specialty to take care of that group of patients. So lots to do. Yeah. You got to figure it out and, and chase, that, chase that dream. Uh, so just to conclude about uh, th that extra year of training, and uh, what are your thoughts about the necessity of that uh, and what the future will hold for interventional fellows? So you mean you're talking about the second year of interventional yes. training? Yeah, I, th I think that, again, it depends on what you want to do. If you know that you want to be a, a coronary interventionalist with, um, you know, uh, CTO skills and, and chip skills, uh, I think you could probably get that in a year of training, provided you're at a, a good volume place with highly skilled operators in those particular uh, arenas. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in structural uh, and peripheral, I actually do think that a second year is required. And I think that all interventional cardiologists really should at least start out with coronary intervention um, because it's really the basis of everything we do. Um, you know, the catheter manipulations, the fine wire manipulations, uh, it's probably harder in the coronary realm than it is in anything else that we do in interventional cardiology. So if you can get a good feel and mastery of that, it'll make transitioning to those other arenas even better. So I do think you need the coronary, and I do think you need that second year if you have a, a subspecialty interest. So Dr. Shaw, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate uh, you taking time talking to us. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. So for more videos like this, go to youtube.com slash fits on the go.